The University of Kansas Hospital is a separate entity from the, Met the Kansas Medical and Nursing School. Although sh the shooting did not take place on the campus, it was extremely near it. KUJH reporter Zach Fisher takes a look on how the KU Med students found out what's going on. With the society we live in today and an unfortunate number of active shooter situations, and alerts need to be sent out to warn the masses. Nothing is different whether the incident involves the University Med Center or the Lawrence campus. The Monday alert included the phrase active shooter. Yesterday, students found out about the shooting early in the morning with the words run, fight, and hide. I'm here in downtown Kansas City where the shooting happened last night right over my right shoulder. And just down the street is the KU School of Med where students study. Now, no students study in this hospital, but that does not mean students are not concerned. Today I felt fine, but just overall it doesn't really leave a good taste in my mouth. You know, I, I live around here, so I walk to campus and I walk to the rec and everything, so um, I don't feel super safe all the time, and especially when things like that happen. I was over there uh, at a coffee shop, shop studying last night and noticed a lot of cars and a lot of police were involved, and so I actually, it impressed me the extent to which the KU Police Department here handled things. KU medical students received a text at 12.23 Tuesday morning saying there is no more threat, but still advised them to avoid the main entrance to the hospital. The hospital was fully functional around 3 a.m. Reporting from the University of Kansas Hospital, Zach Fisher, KUJH TV News. The big issue is the county and the city have not updated their agreement since 2000. In the original 1996 agreement, the city paid more than 73% of EMS services, which is more than $5 million. The, the county covered slightly more than 26%. The city uses services more because the city population is greater than the rest of the county. In October of 2000, the city and the county made a 1% adjustment to those rates. The, those percentages have not changed in 18 years, a large increase in the number of calls. 2017, 9,000 calls were made, which is reported 4,000 more than in 1997. At this city commission work session, the mayor addressed how the funding is becoming inequitable for the citizens of Lawrence. The nature of the services have changed as well. There's a greater percentage of uh, medical calls and a lesser percentage of fire calls. Yeah. The interim fire chief says the city and county need a new agreement. He also says the county's current percentage is not fair, but he's not sure the exact dollar amount the rest of the county should pay. That'll be something that the, the commissions and the county commission will come together and determine that amount. But we just believe that at this time it's greater than the 25.64% that's currently being allocated for EMS provision within the county. The next step in amending this agreement is taking the issue to the county commission. Mayor Stuart Bully says that he wants to get Eudora and Baldwin involved in the conversations. Velveeta, Kraft, we all know these mac and cheese brands. But when it comes down to it, no one company can beat some good homemade crock pot mac and cheese. The local vintage store Lucky Tiger had its first annual mac and cheese cook-off today with a total of around 10 entries. The competition idea came across pretty easily, says store owner Amy Heath. Um, I just, it just happened organically. Mm -hmm. um, we did a jello mold competition, just the first thing we ever did, and that was really fun. I just think it's fun for the community to come together and kind of show off and have a little bit of friendly competition. I'm right outside the Lucky Tiger here where the mac and cheese cook-off is taking place today. It started at 12.30 and will be going on until 4. Locals are in and out of the store all day voting on their favorite kind of mac and cheese. I have lobster mac and cheese here, which is one of my favorites of the day, I have to say. But here is why one local says his mac and cheese is better than the rest. And Maclicious, if you come down here and you try it at this macaroni and cheese cook-off today, which is the second day of February, you can get some chicken, bacon, broccoli, chives, and any kind of cheese you uh, choose because we have that here. With Richard being one of the entries and having competed in other cookouts in Lucky Tiger, his confidence for winning the Noodle Maid trophy is through the roof. I'm, I'm always confident because no one wants to be a loser, you know. So, I mean, 98.5, you know. <laughs> and as for who won, it is completely up to the locals for voting on the matter. One vote per person, best mac and cheese takes the title. Zach Fisher, News Press Now.